Hi, I'm glad you could join me again today. Today, I, my reading has taken me to, again, the book of Exodus. I'm in chapter 2 today. This is a passage of scripture that is very significant to the Jewish people. They speak about it and they think about it every year during their Passover celebration. And uh, this particular passage reminds us of God's care and his love for the people of Israel. It also reminds us of his care and his love for you and me, even in the midst of afflictions, even in the midst of trials and difficulties. At the end of, of Exodus chapter 2, God's, God reminds the people that he takes thought of them and that he looks on their affliction and he cared about them. Now, please understand that in the midst of the writing of this, Mo, um, the, the people of Israel under Moses were still being afflicted. They didn't hear everything that God was saying at this particular time. Through all of the affliction that they had under the Pharaoh of Egypt, they were very much struggling with the... Um, uh, the tasks and the uh, slavery and the hardships that they were in the midst of. And so when God says that he cared, it was to a people who didn't hear him say that. Now that's significant for us because many times when we're going through hard times and afflictions and difficulties, we think that God hasn't heard us we think that because there's not an immediate answer that he is unconcerned over us, or worse, that we have somehow violated his law, offended him in some way, and he, is, and he has forsaken us. But that's not the truth. That's not what this passage teaches. This passage reminds us that he is constantly concerned for you and for me. And that's what we need to take away from this. The, the people who were uh, afflicted in this particular time had not had a specific word from God for a long time. They didn't know that uh, God had specifically chosen Moses. They didn't know that, uh, that he had uh, a plan to redeem them and to take them out of Egypt. Those were things that they were not familiar with and not acquainted with. But what they did experience was the hardship of slavery in Egypt. The taskmasters, the whips, the, the heavy labor that they experienced in that particular time. And so even though the, uh, they were multiplying, and, and that could have been understood as an evidence of God's blessing, yet it probably was insufficient for most of those people. The midwives saw that, as we talked about in chapter 1, but most of the people probably didn't recognize that God was in the midst of this, working his work in the hearts of the people there. He would bring Moses later on. In fact, in the very next chapter, in Exodus chapter 3, we, we see Moses going back to Egypt and, and uh, or rather, we see Moses being directed back to Egypt by God. He doesn't go back until a little bit later. But in, that, in, in those particular events, he, God is taking a much more forward role where everyone can see him. But at this time, he's still in the shadows. He's still behind the scenes. Now, I don't know what you're experiencing, what hardships, what difficult tasks, what uh, pain that you might have, but the reality is that in the midst of that, he still cares for you, just as he still cares for me, and he just as he still cares for the Hebrew people. And so we need to be conscious that even though we may not see his hand, we need to remember that he still is there. And that's why we remember this passage. That's why the Hebrews or the Jewish people today remember this passage every year during their Passover celebration. Because it is a reminder that the God that they serve 
has not forgotten them. He didn't forget them then. He didn't forget them throughout their history, even though they forsook him. And he won't forget them now. And neither will he do that for you and me who are called by his name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your grace and your faithfulness to each one of us. We ask that you would remind us of your constant care. Teach us to trust in your word. Teach us to be ever acquainted with your word and ever keeping our, our hearts and minds attuned to your word so that you will be honored in each one of us. And may we walk with you faithfully. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow.